EG starting on that CT side. No dual Berettas for EG, no kit either, interestingly enough. A bit of a utility purchased up, a smoke for Classy, double flashes for Wiz. He tosses that smoke over to his teammate, everybody else with armor and the USP. 16, Stanislaw, mirrored utility, nade, flash, and smoke. So a good amount of utility for this T side, and a bit of a B-heavy lean from EG in the early going. Wiz is a very fast rotator in Speedway. He's able to make his way back to the B side if called upon. But B-Hop are waiting for some aggression from EG, which sometimes they will go for a mid-push usually. They don't do it this time. They're turtling up waiting with a boost on both Flowers and U-Box. I really like this setup here for EG, and I think it might just be the genius play they need to get on the board of the pistol round win. Would you say that they're evil geniuses? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> The execute's coming in though, Welk has got the boost, he goes for the first engagement, not able to find it though, but his teammates are able to do some good damage. Oh boy, but B-Hop, they've been able to get themselves hopping in this side, but the bomb's gonna be dropped. It's gonna be obtained, that's fine. Back to a 4 on 3 situation now, B-Hop, waiting things out. Bomb's still not planted yet. They're waiting for it, they're waiting for these fights. They are, the fights have to come through. Actually, wait, the bomb has to go down at some point, so EG don't need to necessarily push. They can get these fights and just completely chunk away the health of the B-Hop players. Finally, Silas will get that bomb to dirt, and Spermie will tap away for Wiz. That's a big start for Spermie. You want to see him getting into the game early on. Hex goes one for one, Classia one as well, but he can't get by Beaky. Four kills for Beaky on the pistol, and despite having a really good setup in theory, EG just weren't able to execute. And that's a bit of an issue. You need to be able to win that kind of a round, especially when you have that kind of an advantage. All the focus is being placed on that new box player after first contact. And still, Walco wasn't the first to fall. Yeah, nice execution that comes in. There we go. Full investment going to come through. And MP9 is going to come right back here from the EG squad. Double Deagle's available too. Classy gonna be right by the sandbag. He might be able to get this flash from his teammate. Walkle does have one ready to go if they want. Ooh, some good damage though. Actually exchange on both, but Yelp actually takes the brunt of it. There's the flash, comes for the swing, but Classy is not able to find it at all. They're gonna have to fall back on this. Well now you can see Behop deciding to go for this commit. The nades are coming through. Oh, they're actually gonna backpedal this box. They're not gonna commit to this at all, and the rotates are coming in. That's the wise move. Do not need to commit on this kind of a take. You've already taken significant damage. Run the other way. EG most likely rotate the extra guy, which they did. This is the right read from Stanislaw, veteran in game leader. Making the right call here. Spermie comes up. Hex gets caught blind, looking the wrong direction. And EG might just be better off saving what they have here. Do not go for this commitment. And Walco should be fine if he retreats all the way to that back corner of church, but. Ehop, a very strong start here on their map pick. Two rounds. And the Force 5 from EG has not really been able to do anything. And in fact, EG haven't been able to do too much in terms of finding frags just yet. Bit of a concern in the early going. And the thing is, too, it's not like the setups, the plays have necessarily been bad. They've been the right idea, the right call. Just when it comes down to clicking on the head or getting the kill, it has not worked. Yeah, this is kind of the, the EG little fashion, right? I mean, sometimes they have these games where they start really slow and then they get that motor running. They warm up. Everybody's feeling a lot better. Like you said, just all about them hitting the shots. Get the bucking in that, right? For oh, all yeah. my fellow Canadians. I mean, yeah. It's never going to end up in the back of the net if you don't throw it on that. Exactly. Oh, well, one more time we go. Pistols. EG. Saving those players alive. They're going to have to just kind of work with the save or lighter purchase, I should call it. Mac Titan going to lead the charge here. Stannis Law. Salas so taking some big damage, but oh, look at this. Actually, I don't know what's going on, but Wiz. I don't know who you think you are, but he's trying to go for a fight that he shouldn't be doing. He tries to take the long range duel with the Deagle, and he runs into the Mac 10. That's basically. As big of a type advantage Stanislaw could get out of that situation. There's another one where he runs into a P250 just tapping away. Still some damage being exchanged, but nothing really significant coming through just yet from EG. Another round you can't expect them to do too much on, but Sixy over on oh. B, the one-man army, mopping up the B defenses. Bomb's not even going to get anywhere close to the site as Spermie has the last kill. It's a 3-0 start here for the B-Hop side. 
Here comes the buy from EG. Wiz should have the op and utility as well behind it. No kit form, but Hexed will buy one, so at least they have one. Make it two as Chop will invest into one as well. Galil's, Mac 10s, and the MP7 out for the B Hop side. But if B Hop are able to win this, it's going to be a really good start for them. Something that could spur them on to, or potentially a map victory. As a four or five round start on TZ Inferno would be a huge, huge boost to this team, especially coming in as the underdogs. And EG with a bit, of, bit to prove after last night's performance. Perhaps the mental fortitude could be tested a little bit here. With these SMGs, you would think they go a little bit more aggressive, right? I mean, you got the double Mac 10s, the, the MP7, I feel like it never gets to say that. I know, but, right? And I, I think EG, they know that there are some SMGs on the on the battlefield right now, so they, they're waiting things out. But b they want those to be the first one to contact. That's where these weapons are going to thrive. Right now, you can see B-Hop, though. They get the mid-bracket controlled. Now it's going to be Beaky coming for the wide stance. Going to be able to go in through Arch, but Classy gets a kill, but Wiz misses the shot. And now they're getting a bit of a sandwich. EG, you're going to have to live evil, but not right now. It's looking like B-Hop are getting their way into this site. And now the rotates are coming in. Beaky's able to find this kill, too. So Waco gets eradicated. He gets just removed. And look at these players. They're stuck. They don't know what to do. B Hop are kind of stuck themselves, though. They have to make their way onto the site. They can't exactly split towards B either, given their positioning. And Wiz, head on a swivel, spots at the player in library, silences that main point of opposition. And now in this 3v3, B Hop, the low HP player of Spermy, have a lot of work to do to be able to get into the site. Wiz hits the second shot, and Wiz is starting to come alive here. Big after that early miss in the round. Hex, though, demolished by Silas around the smoke, gets a bit of an angle. And Wiz on site, goes for the shot, misses it. Spermy jumping around, now has his own big green gun to work with, leaving it all down to Chop in a 1v2. At the very least, the bomb is going down, and four kills have come through from B-Hop, which is a win in and of itself when it comes to the damage they've done on this bonus round. But what they want right now is the whole enchilada. They want to take this one here and now, go up 4 nothing, most likely 5s. EG will have nothing to buy with in the next round. Maybe some pistols and light armor. It's not going to be pretty unless Chop can put a bow on it. Up on top of the boxes, not clearing his left angle. He gets the shot on the one. Oh Goes away for, for Spermy, rather, and has the kill he needs. Picks up the kit, picks up the op, picks up the round, but it is incredibly costly for evil geniuses, and they're going to have to work some magic with the money here. Let's watch this again, how narrowly Chop escapes. Just so, so close to falling. If Spermy has the MP7, there's no way Chop gets out of there alive. So many great things that we saw from that round. I mean, I love that B-Hop. They just kind of go all the way around it. They're the bun of the sandwich. EG was in the middle. They just wait things out. They wait for the rotators. They get those kills. But it just came down to a little bit of mispositions that we saw. I think even Beaky peeked a bit too wide when the library mm. gets picked with that off. Unnecessary. But like you said, Chop, somehow getting that high ground position on the box, that saved them to get around. Oh my good hey. grief. That's a big nade. That's a lot of nade damage. That's Beaky to 26. Nade. Spermies in the red, man. That's what like, EG can do to you, though. They're really good for the utility. Like, we're talking thick with, like, double Cs right now. Like, it's, it's I'd give like... i triple. Oh, well, man, that's that's early on. We're only five rounds in here, Boggs. I'd give him the triple C, though. This team is great with utility. Look at the timing of the Molotov, too. It's going to burn Beaky down red. Walco is going to push aggressively and finish off Spermy and maybe even go for more. No, he's not going to jump. He knows he needs to play with the man advantage. His team doesn't exactly have the best buys here. Yes. The utility is all but spent. And oh, this six. is He's up in. He's up in, and he's here for blood. Walco can't get away. That evens things up at a four on four. 39 seconds to go. This softens up the B site quite considerably. All four B hop players ready to. Jump on into this site. Wiz needs to hit one and back away quickly. Blinded, but he's got the first. He can back back to new box. Time is low as well. We might be seeing a Stewie situation here. No, only one more. Still, he's bought time for the rotation to come through. 6 in a 1v3. Has to get the bomb down. He goes for a bit of a preemptive plant. But he still has that smoke to cover off his planting of the bomb in the wide open area behind the pillar. It wasn't even a completely safe pillar plant. He's got the angle now, though. This is a round that Danny can completely lock down on his own. Look at the position of water. Look where Chop has moved in forward. Up on the coffins. Danny's not expecting that at all. And Chop the hero two rounds in a row.
Yeah, and Downy putting a lot of focus. This is a great boost. Look at the way they get themselves into the site. Volko never expecting that. It almost came down to it, though. You can see that one player in the deep CT was a big distraction point. Allowing, like you said, Chop. Creep his way through. Snake his way into the site. It's an easy kill, and we're talking about a one-round differential now. It's a full purchase coming back from B-Hop. The plant playing a big part of that. Adding some good value in the money game. An MP9 here for Classia. He's looking to do some farming maybe, but look at the nades. All right, I'm giving you triple C. I mean, they definitely earned it. Beaky's already down to 28 again. We're down to minute 35. Yeah, it, it's so many times we've watched this lineup over the years because this lineup has stuck around as a core for, I want to say since season 30. Maybe 32. It's been a while. Either way, they've just continually improved the coordination in their setups, their nade damages. They've put in the hours watching the demos, timing things down, putting in the dry runs and the work. And it shows with the nade damage they're able to consistently get. It makes it so much easier when all you have to do is hit one or two shots on somebody to kill them instead of four. Let's get the jump done faster, that's for sure. Yeah, and then hey, you got more bullets in that 20 round M4 mag to get some more kills. Yeah, especially for all these users of the uh, the A1S. It'll take anything you can get. The five round decrease. In the magazine. This little fake we're seeing from B-Hob. You can see that towards Banana, it's actually double smokes being placed, and now they're trying to get this rotate coming off from EG. There it is. Wiz, he's going to run all the way through now. He's the opper. He's the only person with the big green. He's put his focus towards B now, and this is where B-Hop should be able to retrieve this bomb. They're going to go for the execute on A, but they got the lurk of Stanislaw in apartments. He loves this position. But Beaky's going to get taken down early at the B, so now the distraction's been moved, but they have to start going, going now. It's only 10 seconds remaining. Hex is able to find a kill. Oh, EG. They are making all the noise in the world. The bomb's going to get planted, but now it's just down to Silas. They got the bomb planted, yeah, but it's Silas in a 1v4 at this point, and it very easily could have been a 1v5. Wiz is going to put the final man down. But this is the first really strong round we've seen from EG so far this game. The two prior rounds they won, they've been scrappy. They've been close. It's been neck and neck. But this round is where EG really get comfortable. This is where they start to lock in. And let's see who calls this time out here. As I feel like it's going to be B-Hop. Yeah, it's a B-Hop timeout. It kind of has to be a B-Hop timeout at this point. Because, yeah, things were looking good for really early. But now, it looks like EG really on how B-Hop's playing. They probably want to stop taking all that nade damage down Banana, too. Because when you have one guy at 28 HP, 10, 15 seconds into the round, really makes your take a lot more difficult. Yeah, this is going to be a good time, like you said. B-Hop can just kind of figure things out. Like you said, the nade damage has been monumental right now for evil geniuses they've been just the fact that they can wound so many of the players from beob it just doesn't make the job easier right but tech nine for danny so 60 just gonna have the pistol equipped working around the four rifles Op still in the play here for Wiz. double or triple player sorry down banana here for evil geniuses kind of a good stack testing for the sandbags but beehop eating things out slowly Oh, now they're going to try to fight for this. They waited for all that utility like you talked about, Boggs. But there's just bombardment of them. Oh, no. Oh, it just keeps raining nades. It's raining nades. And for EG, it might be hallelujah. Certainly not joyful for b -op. But hey. It keeps on working. B-Hop still had later utility to use, too, despite B-Hop trying to wait out for the early artillery strike. And look how much utility B-Hop's already used, too. Two smokes and a flashbang remain. 55 seconds on the clock. That is not a lot of time at all. Or it's a lot of time, excuse me, not a lot of utility to work with. One smoke for an exec, or two smokes, one flashbang for an exec. Good luck, have fun. And that's a fake smoke from Stan. Is it going to buy a rotation? Is it going to force Classia back? He's edging back. He's just making sure nobody's slipping by to CT. He's not going to commit to it, though. That flash is going to mean he's going to walk back. This actually caught Stanislaw on the lurk. Chops up on flowers, but they are ready for it. They go for the pre-aim spray. Sixy grabs an AK real quick. Gets that bomb down. Spermie, Spermie? right by. Spermie's just let Chop in, and he gets all three. He's cut him down, and Spermie 
four by three. That has to be a four by three. That's moment. gotta be four by three. I was thinking the same thing. Like it wasn't even a flash thrown. You can see it just on the edge of the screen. I hope we catch this. There it is. Look at this, Spermy. You can see him. You can see him for days. But yeah, he's gonna be on the wrong settings. Oh no! And look at that chop. He just runs on in. Yeah. Drops him down. Bring I'm it back to a four and three. That 16, 80, 10, 50. I just can't believe it. A timing too. The fact that Chop goes for that—that's—that's that's a ballsy play from Chop. But hey, it works. It Sometimes does. you got to go for a play like that. And it even was if a flash. he just gets one, it works. There was that flash too. But even if he just gets one kill, he's done enough to create some space. They had the man advantage still. Look at the buy though from B Hop now, Les. Tech nines, util. But it's not Game and Gladiator, so I don't think we're gonna see the Tech Nines win. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. For anybody that's been watching the the B stream for the last few days, it was uh, pistols were better than rifles at some point. The nades still doing damage. More that's utility usage. The be that's the beautiful thing about this team on EG. Like again, like you said, I mean the utility usage. Something to behold. Now all the executes coming in. B-Hop running in. Classy out looking to make a highlight reel, but no, he's only able to find the one kill. Now Wiz trying to see what he can do. He's gonna no scope. He's gonna find a little bit more if he can. A tech nine is out for the battle. Chop needs to get moving, but his teammate's down. But look at the positioning bugs. This is perfect. He might be able to just get gifted an easy kill. There it is. One and make it two. No sweat. All right, what did Chop eat for breakfast? What did I, Chop eat for breakfast? Because he's on a tear. Oh, he's living evil. He's making so many correct decisions. So many little minute things that you won't really notice. Like the decision to not run up lane and to go around the smoke. That made a whole world of difference. If he would have started running, chances are B-Hop on the round. But just by delaying, going silent, catching them off guard, going around, taking a wider angle for a fight, he gives himself the space and time, the opportunity to get a kill. And the second one, that's a bit more of a confidence swing. But when you're at 10 and 2, you have the confidence to go for that kind of a peak. And there's no reason why you shouldn't. Chop is on full form right now. I know the EG teams were all together, at least uh, the PA and CD teams were together up in Seattle, having a bit of a boot camp together. I think Chop is really blossoming, showing the fruits of that kind of a boot camp with the multiple different players. Classia coming in with another kill on the Stanislaus. The guns of B Hop are just getting torn from their fingers. Walco eliminates Beaky over towards B on the lurk. But Six, he's slipped in behind. He's in towards Speedway. But look at Walco. They know. The calm has been made that CT is open. They can be behind. And there's no way Sixie's ready for this. There's no way he's ready for Walco to just be sitting on that angle. He's going to go down, surely. He's taking the shot. He's actually aware of the possibility, but he's been harassed down very low. Sprayed into the grave, and Silas headshot on the chop, but he's dinked down. No chance for him in the 1v5. Now it's a 1v4, but time not on his side. HP really not on his side, and Walco just playing the time, waiting for his teammates to come through. This is so well disciplined. Takes the wide swing after the bit of a burst. And EG, six rounds straight after the 3 0 start from B Hop. They've really turned it around. That's what I'm talking about, Bugs. They have a little bit of a slow start, but look at them now. I think it's what, about six rounds in a row that we've seen from EG. And they look smooth almost every round that we keep progressing. Looking better and better. And now Wiz back for... Ooh, they're going to go for the boost actually with the other player. Not going to be the Op or Klassia. It's denied by the Molotov. The Op. Needing to pull a big strat out of this one. But Klassia hone. Oh, boy. He's just able to find more. This obscene. <laughs> and the utility usage. There it is. Danny just eats the pin of the grenade. Man, everyone's coming alive now for EG. Chop was a bit of the catalyst chop down some of the vines to let him get some space and get some confidence and now it's just the rest of the boys just chiming in getting kills left and right classy though 
That's a bit overzealous. He gets punished. And Wiz actually falls to Stanislaw too, trying to put the team on his back. Walco tagged down to 22. This has now become a bit of a dangerous situation for EG. They can get caught, but Hex can do the catching. Stan backs right into his crosshair. And Sixy left alone in a 1v3. But if there is a player to pull it off on the B-Hop side, it would be this very man of Sixy. He's got to isolate the 1v1s. And he can definitely isolate the 1v1 duels here. If he, clo if he clears out towards... Towards the cubby arch side. If he checks his six, he can who's gone into apps. This Where's Hext watching? Is Hext watching apps or lane right now? Yeah, he's watching apps. He's got his lane covered. He knows that. Six he's dead. You can even see the players from EG to get a bit more aggressive. A little bit of uh off positioning. Getting a little bit more aggro. That confidence is starting to feel a lot better, right? They're starting to feel groovy. But then when they lose those two players pretty quick, I mean, they get right back into their posture. They get back into the normal positions. Get back to the discipline. For anybody wondering or missed the, missed the newsletter, there is three different rosters of EG. Just to give a little heads up, we talked about it in the pre-show. But hey, we'll bring it up one more time. This is the Evil Geniuses Carpe DM squad. Or EGCD, as some people like to call it. But we call him EG. We call me. We do call him EG. That's what they are officially called. Yeah. Just for, just for any confusion, yeah. Just to make sure everybody's aware. Public service announcement. Once more. And B hops will be up. <laughs> they do be up. They do be up. But they need to get something out of this one. Oh, more nade damage, this time into alt mid. EG's utility. I love watching this team just for their utility alone. It's always so fun, entertaining to watch them completely decimate an opposition with their well-timed in place nades. So much arch control taken, but EG know this. Walco, get your gun out, buddy. He's got a plethora of players to take down. He struck down one, going back and forth. Could get caught out. Yes, he will. 16, Stanislaw picking up a couple of kills. The B site now wide open in towards library. Classy trying to gain some ground back, but Stan holding the line now has a gun for his own. His other two teammates have picked up rifles, and the bomb is going to go down on the B side. Hex flashing himself in. They know where he's coming from, but he's got to deliver with one headshot. Almost a second. The bomb. And Wiz comes through. The cavalry has arrived. The bomb at his feet, and Stanislaw, his last opponent. I agree, that Stan. Just... Wave that hand a little bit. Didn't Nate just bring a gun back to him? It did, yeah. Even though he already had an M4, he got an extra. Well, he just needs an extra in case. He does have less bolts in the chamber, right? Just in case. Yeah. Just Swap guns when he run out. Oh, this timing. is all about timing now. Look at this timing. Oh, but Wiz. Oh, my. He's got it. He's got it. Find... Oh, my. There we go. Let's watch this again, though. This is the nade. Watch Big how brain. perfect this nade is. Boom. In comes the M4. Pristine positioning on that nid. What's that? What's that skin called? The blue one. I, I was gonna ask you the same thing. I, I was gonna. I was like, it's not. It's not blue rod. That's that's. There's a different one. But it's, that's it's not the bad. blue hot rod. I know blue what you Blue hot mean. rod. <laughs> it's that's not the official name. Where's JRT when you need him? Yeah, the guy would know for sure. He he has a couple. That he does. Yeah, he tried to get me to invest in those back in the day. Oh, of course he did. I should have. <sighs> if I would have listened to him. <laughs> It's a feel bad moment. Yep. Bit of a default coming in from B Hop once more. They've changed the pace on this, so they got the player on T ramp, three towards all middle, waiting things out for the mid bracket. But you can see EG's actually giving this up a little bit of aggression coming in from Hex into apartments. Now the lean's coming in EG. They put four of players How onto the same site now. Has, though? This is all the info banana. He's got the op, he's just peeking down. He knows it's not B. That's as why they can afford to lean this heavily. Exactly. As soon as he makes a shot, hit or miss, he can fall back. His teammate comes to help him. He's still got the utility. He's got the molly to deny any kind of a push. Yeah, and Walco's in a fast rotation. He's also on the M4A4, so we're starting to see people trickle in the A4 again. Oh, six. He just got demolished. Walco farming all headshots with the A4. That's a brilliant piece of work from Walco now. Taking over the top fragger spot from Chop. And B Hop, aside from those initial three rounds, have done literally nothing.
It's been eight in a row for EG, and it's looking like a ninth. There is a possibility, a very realistic possibility, this half ends at 12-3 in favor of the evil geniuses. The way this game's going, I, I, I don't disagree with you. And they're saving. Keep, well, they have to. They, they, it's, a, it's a two on four. They have no control of the situation at all, and their money is... It's gone, man. It's a dumpster. Yep. They're going to be diving in that dumpster. I mean, his teammates can be able to work around this. 3,437 for Beaky. Oh, look at this. This is just individual one-on-one -on -one duels. Dehop not able to swing that properly or all together. And it costs them now. Like you said, I mean, EG, the fact they get the utility usage, you wound B-Hop in the beginning, more to deny any sort of the aggressions, their utility usage is just superb. It is indeed superb. That's a very good way to describe it. And, case in point, all this damage exchanged towards Top Banana. Sixie's got an op. Beaky's got a tech. And B-Hop... They only have three rounds. That's just not enough. Especially for their map pick. Classy, it could have got picked. He could have also picked somebody else off. He will get one. Does he expect the player up in stairs? He is watching for it, but he's going to dive down boiler, drop a Molotov in towards top middle. Nade out as well. Let's see if that takes Beaky down a little bit more. It'll tickle him a little bit. Nothing really to write home about. Stan, though, lurking through the department's place. He loves so much. Hexed is on the angle, though. Hexed is on the case. Wiz could get caught if he creeps out, but Spermie's gone. Hex going just around behind it. Gets the gun back out, but Stan dashes away, retreating to group up with his team as the bomb is down T-Ramp. His teammates were over towards bottom banana. They have to recover the objective, but it's a dangerous game to get that back. Silas will achieve it. 3v5, though, for B-Hop, and it doesn't look pretty for them. And look at the rotation from Wiz back speedway as well. He's going to go a little more towards the A site. Keep an eye on Arches. But with that smoke coming through, he's going to make the full rotation back towards B. Walco's going to wait, play anti-flash. But there's no flashes for B-Hop to throw. They've used all their utility, and Wiz is a wide-open angle. One onto the site. He can go for more. Beaky will trade. But it's not like there's much more hope here for the B-Hop side. As Beaky on top of Walco. He's on his head. What? He's on top of Walco. Who gets the kill? Silas with a couple on the site. 1v2, but there's a double swing from both Classy and Hexed. Hexed with the trade and the round. That's a cop. Comical occurrence out towards oranges, though. We can just watch this again. He's like, wait, what? 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 He's like, wait, why am I higher? Why am I not on the ground? Oh, man. Can we watch oh. that again? I'm going to bring this back. Oh, I love this. He's like, yeah, I'm going to go on the ground. I'm going to fight him. And he's like, wait. Wait a minute. What am I doing here? Who are you? Where's Walco? Bam, dead. Right here. And wait, it mean... You know, Walco did have the high ground. <laughs> yeah, I guess he does. I guess Walco's coming just Obi-Wan Kenobi. Ooh, Ooh mid-aggression coming in from b -Hop. Ooh. Have to try fast and Furious action, maybe? It's not a bad call. It's mixing up the pace, but b -Hop really haven't called a time. They've called a what? Have they called two timeouts? Yeah, they've called two timeouts. Yeah, it's been two so far. They haven't really gotten anything done off. So, might as well... Try throwing the raw aggression, maybe it'll work. They've got some space, but they haven't been able to get anything else besides it. They haven't been able to build into a good round off of the space either. But they have drawn Walco away from the B site. This will give them a little more of an opportunity, especially if Chop only gets one. Yeah, Chop's gonna need to stay alive. As long as he can. Smoke gonna come in. Ooh, this could slow things down once more. They gotta make a decision whether they wanna go through it or not. CT's got double player lane. Wolko just waiting in CT spawn. Like you said, waiting to see if anybody's slipping through. But no, now the execute comes in. Chop, he's expecting this. Oh man, this could be beautiful, but it's only gonna be one. But Hex is able to find the double. He's able to hold his hand. He's able to get the revenge needed. And now it's a three on two. B-Hop need to get moving. They only got 30 seconds to get the bomb plant down. They got some utility to work with, though, here, Boggs. That's not going to matter. Not at all. It's the individuals. It's the utilities. Everything right now working out for the evil geniuses. Classia flashed in. Jumps through with the A4. He could upgrade to an AK now, but it's got 11 to 3. It was 3-0 B-Hop if you were just joining us.
been 11 straight for the evil geniuses. They could do 12 straight and completely lock B-Hop out of their T side. It is also B-Hop's map pick, in case you all missed it as well. With Overpass as map 2. EG are here for blood, they are here for redemption. They are here to move on to the lower bracket. A little bit faster pace now from B-Hop, gonna get... And Morego gonna be able to clear Sandbag, Molly's being placed, now Molko going for the re aggress but now 60's able to find this kill on the Hex. They win the opening duel, now the swing comes in, Silas able to find that. This is just mayhem, everything is just going on, everybody's going for a fight in every part of the map. Fair day though. Oh, this is nuts, and Classia still wins that fight! How does he still win that? Now look at Wiz, he's just gonna go right through this, goes with the no scope. He's not able to find it, but he gets the leg! And look how spread apart B-Hop are. If Classia gets the kill, he can get the defuse for free. Sperm is all the way down D-Ramp. But Classia doesn't know where Silas is. 3 HP in the op. Low HP op is a dangerous combination. He's got the right idea, the right angle. But he crouches in, and that's gonna let Classia see his leg. Spermy now has to clutch this one up. Does Classia expect him to be towards Banana? He has a smoke there. He has another one on his person. He can use it there again. But Spermy can line this one up. It's not like he can ping the bomb or anything, but... Wait, it's not the usual plant. Classy's just gonna smoke the bomb off. He can't cross! Spermy locks it down. 11 to 4. We'll see you for half two. Love it, you wear it. What's your style? Get your merch at shop.eslgaming.com.
B out might have won the pistol in the ensuing three rounds, but uh, EG went on an 11 to round streak. B Hop were able to win the last of the half, but 11 to 4. EG firing on all cylinders. B Hop with a lot to do to claw this one back. It is their map pick. I am Boggs, joined by Laz, and this is ESL Challenger League Season 41 in North America. Chop with the silent boost into bedroom. Could put Stan to sleep here. Oh, he spotted out 60, but he wins both duels! Headshots all around. Classy and Hexed add to the tally. It's Beaky, the lone man on B, to try and rotate and save the day, but EG looking like they're going to pick up a pistol round here that puts B-Hop down behind the eight ball. Man, oh man. Chop is on a tear. And the rest of the squad following suit here. They're hunting due for Beaky and, well, Hexed couldn't connect the shot he needed. He falls down. But Beaky will not be too long for this world. There's two on A, two flanking through B, and Beaky, well, he's going to try and be sneaky Beaky. Don't think it'll work out too well. It's all about survival. The danger zone. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, can he get a kill? Oh, he's in the danger zone, and there it is. EG, they get it. They grab it. I love this pistol round, like you said. The fact that he wins this, look at that. Ooh, quick little jiggle. Boom. Then he goes for another one. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Well. Full purchase comes in for B-Hop. They uh, invest all the pistols in the world. The Eagles, five sevens, utility, desperation. Beaky going down middle now. Gonna see what he can do. Nade. Great nade onto Wiz. Look at that. Ooh, and they win the first duel too. And they got a second kill out of that. It's now a 3v2. This is technically winnable for B-Hop. Spermie somehow not getting tagged by the spam. That nade though will take him down to just about half HP. Smoke goes out to top banana. And Sixy worming his way around A, looking for something to give him an advantage. Hexed is very low. That is one thing to keep an eye on. Flash going, or smoke rather, going over side towards Moto. Sixy hears all the sound, but do they clear apartments? Do they expect this? They have not. Hexed is mowed down, but Chop is coming through here. Takes some fights, takes a long exchange, and finally wins the duel. That could have been messy, though, especially if he would have fallen. Bomb can go down, and Walker will stay on the Mac 10 for now. Smoke goes back out to Moto, resmoking the position, but Spermie's gone through. Walker might have spotted him, however. Spermie has to back away. He does have a diffuse kit, but it does not have a lot of health, does not have the firepower. He needs a long, he needs a close range duel. He cannot afford the long range duels. And the Molotov will just keep him more and more at bay. This one should be a 13th for EG. Spermie, what can he really hope to do here? Flash is high. Times are gone. He needs to move and not exactly the position he wanted to move to. Death. Yeah, now they're putting in a position they don't want to be in bogs. I mean, they got to go for, again, a light purchase on this one. 2,800 pretty much across the board here for B-Yop. Full save. One flash purchase from 6C. It's going to be the 4-1 stack coming in. You can stand as law by himself in middle. Just getting some information. EG dropping the bomb on T-Ramp. Just going to push their way through Banana. There we go, making a lot of noise. Now Stan has made his way over too, so they've given up. They've vacated A. They've left it. Ooh, emo stack. I like it. It's a little bit cheeky. It might work. But it's done some damage. Vicky actually still alive, too. Molotov's gonna go in, but he's already left. They'd have to know he retreated in. The flash is well placed, but the kills are not there. Classy with a couple hex with another. He will fall, but whiz. He'll trade it back out. Bomb can go down on B. 6E left alone. With just a USP, Chop has the gun out. Good luck, Danny. Actually, he got a free AK out of that. that that's incredibly surprising. And something, a bit of a silver lining for B-Hop. But then, when you look at the score, that's going to be 14-4. A cloud just seems to form over the B-Hop side, and it's about to open and pour rain. Yeah, we'll have to see what B-Hop can do now. I mean, the fact that we're at EG with a 14th is going to be the one gun round they desperately will need. 
Desperate with a capital D. It's that important. We could just capitalize the whole word. Terrorists win. Yeah, maybe that. Oh no, 60. Oh, stop. It, just stop inspecting your knife. Oh. Oh, I know it's nice. I know it's flashy. But you don't need to be doing it. You're saving the gun for a reason. Oh no. Anyway. Oh, what a feel bad moment. Uh, well, the window got rolled down and 60 got mowed down. He's got an op now, so I guess. I guess he just wanted the op. He's like, yeah, who needs the AK? Just give me the big green. Give me the sniper. One shot, one kill. But if EG win this round, EHOP have nothing to fight with in the next. They might even be contemplating a save at 15 4. Uh, that's a hard decision. Do you save at that point? Do you save and let it go to 15 4? Or do you throw everything at it on an unfavorable retake? We go down 15-4, but with most possibility with just pistols and SMGs and the one after. That's like go a terrible save. decision. Yeah. There's no right answer there. It's a Kobayashi Maru. Ooh, nice Ooh. little quick peek from Silas. Able to find that with the timing with the smoke. Doing the opening duel. AK going to be picked up now. He's sitting on brackets. They got Classy actually pushing all the way up into Arch. He might be able to find this. Oh, he might get timinged. Oh, he could find Silas, but he's waiting for him. Oh, but he still gets annihilated. He's evaporated. He's gone. Neutralized. I don't know. There's so many words I can say. And now 60 has to come up even bigger, but he's able to just get the wall bang. He's not able to find more than that. And EG, they have just secured a free bomb site. And now Klasia. look at Classia. Oh, he might be able to find some more kills. Is he going to have a swisher moment? Now he's going to let him go. But chops come through as well. Just around the corner of the smoke actually gets taken down. So this gives Classy a much more of an opportunity to come up with a big 3k. Stan jumps up. But Classy strikes for one. Sprays down the second. All down to Stanislaw. Can he clutch up and keep his team essentially alive in this map? Against his former organization. Taps the bomb. Wiz will not overextend. Peaks it. Clears it. Holds it. And finishes it. 15 to 4. EG on top right now. And B-Hop will buy what they can. FAMAS's SMGs are likely. Maybe even some pistols and utility. A timeout taken by B-Hop. Third of four. But this could be their last opportunity to call one in this map. Overpass looms as the next one. And as we were talking about in the pre-show, Overpass heavily favors the EG side. So B-Hop need to come up with something big here. Couple of FAMAS's, a 5-7 for 6 -y. Whatever Silas buys. This is even worse than the 15-5. And we know how that ended for Taco. <laughs> oh. Started Boggs. Boggs and Eater. Well, we talked about Overpass being a uh, heavy favorite. Kind of seeing that right now. Unless we see the unthinkable, 11 rounds will be needed for a B-Hop to uh, climb their way to an overtime. And uh, there's going to be Hex getting a little bit roasted. Not comparable to what we've seen from Evil Genius he is able to do. The double boost comes in. Stan able to find a nice little cheeky kill though. And now Hex is going for more. And there it is. B-Hop finding two more kills. He got a big advantage. We haven't seen this in a long time. We haven't seen this kind of a round from B-Hop really since round three. So it's good to see this from the B-Hop side while they might be on the brink of defeat. We still can't count out EG though. 3v5, I still have faith in this squad to pull this back, especially how they've been doing, and especially with Chop and Classy alive. Chop, though, with a very rough duel against Spurby, will lose that one. And the bomb is just being abandoned out to Ram. EG just gonna go and try and do what they can in terms of damage. But this is now a round which could give B-Hop a lot more life. Fifth round looking very likely now. Classia will get one out of Stanislaw. A lot of time on the clock still. And Silas very low, just sitting in church. Beaky pushing all the way down bottom middle, but look where Wiz is watching. He swaps to the AK, and that's going to be his undoing. Beaky delivers a nice little headshot. Classia pushing down into CT. One more. Has an idea. Spermie's around here. Spermie, though, swings out wide. 
And B-Hop will survive a little bit longer. Hop back to the hands of Sixy. AKs and a couple of B-Hops players and... Again, we have another map point for EG, but they can buy up again. AKs, Khalil's. No op for Wiz, though. I'm sure he would like his big dream. But if things stay as they are, EG could win a map with none of their players negative. That's a good point. Ooh, double player down. Ooh, looky here. What do we got? Oh, no. Oh no, it's a jack-in-the-box. It's gonna be evil geniuses. They come right out. Look at this now. It's just down to one player. It's gonna be Stan going against the former organization. Only able to find two. He drops the bomb at least. But now the CTs are on the rotate. Walker with one. Walker's looking for another. But he'll get denied it. It's Beaky in a 1v2 for survival mode now. It's all on the shoulders of young Beaky. It is win and stay alive, lose and go to overpass. Which statistically would signal their defeat, and there it is! 16 to 5 for EG. We'll see you in map two.